Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is a digital rebar training video in which we will be extending the Runbook pipeline using our cloud brokers to include Ansible tasks. And we're going to take you through the whole process from the generic cloud brokering through building a custom pipeline and then finally adding a custom Ansible task into that pipeline. Uh, the whole process will take about 20 minutes, but I want to break it down into the individual steps so that you get a good idea of how to duplicate this behavior because it's super powerful. The simplest thing that we're going to start with right now is we're going to start with training one cluster and we're just going to use Linode as the, as the basics. I've already set up my Linode cluster. We have other videos for this that I would strongly recommend that you watch. And for this, What we want to be able to do is just build a very simple cluster. We're going to use our, our base. We're going to set our pipeline to just universal application, application base. This is our generic pipeline. Our other settings are going to be fine. Create a little bit of color here, green and a unique icon for us. Make this easier. This is our baseline. So following this process, I'm going to automatically build a single machine cluster that runs the generic cluster provision. Uh, there's nothing special about this. It's designed to be a very generic option. And if I start chasing through what's going on behind the scenes a little bit, you'll see that I'm using the Linode broker. I can check in on the Linode broker. I can see that it's actually running something now. And in this process, I can jump in and see that work order being processed and check in and see what's going on. So, in this case, I've gone from my cluster provisioning request all the way through to the actual Terraform that's running that request. And in the process of building this cluster, what it will do is it will assign that initial pipeline for me to follow. So once it gets to a point where it's created the machine, which will happen in just a moment, there we go, I can come over into the machines tab. Here's that machine created for the cluster. So training one is the cluster, zero is the first machine. And you'll notice here that we have assigned this pipeline universal application, application base. That was the pipeline that we asked for and it's one of the standard ones the system starts with and cluster uh, profile, which has unique things about the profile. Once the machine is created, it's gonna check in to digital rebar and then start that pipeline. And you can see it's going through that process right now. If we expand up a little bit, we're at universal start. It'll progress from there. This pipeline automatically switches over to the universal runbook, which is what we're doing. It's going through that process. Universal runbook includes a Linux package updater, so that takes a little bit of time. We can actually watch that go as it does a, uh, for CentOS, an Epil install or a, a yum update or a uh, apt-get update process. But for now, we've completed a very simple generic machine bring up. Uh, and so that that is now a, a system that's gone through that runbook, which isn't very useful because it hasn't actually built anything that, that you've controlled or added. It's just created machines in the cloud in itself useful, but not complete. Uh, one thing to note here is that we have done a Terraform and then now we're about to do the Ansible part of that connected infrastructure. So let's look at how to do that process in Digital Rebar. What I want to do is create my own version of that pipeline. The pipelines are actually profiles, and what we're going to do is look for application base here. So here is my universal application base profile. You'll see it's locked because it came in, and you can see I've been playing around a little bit uh, and rehearsing and getting ready for this training. So we're going to start from this application base profile, uh, and actually what I want to do here is just clone it. So we'll clone this profile. We're going to call this one training. Uh, we're just going to call it our training uh, pipeline. It's excellent. And we can give it some more interesting colors. We'll make it green, give it a uh, dashboard. I don't have the required and optional or some things that we've inherited from the uh, universal application. I'm not going to worry about those. And uh, we're going to give it a good description. There is our training. And what you'll notice here is, here's my universal application. It's not application-based. We've renamed it. It's called training. And then in this, here's this uh, runbook workflow that I described. So my pre-runbook, uh, runbook pre-flexi flow, that means I'm injecting this Linux package update tasks before I do the work of the system. That makes perfect sense um, 
from that perspective. What I really want to do is in this, I want to inject a task to do the Ansible work that's necessary. And to do that, what I want to do is I want to say during our Flexiflow, run book during Flexiflow. And now I can add in um, another task. So uh, we have a task called, uh, let's see, I think it's Ansible uh, local, let's see, uh, Ansible playbooks. Oh, Ansible, local. we're going to look this up in a second, local playbooks, confirm that I did the right thing. This needs to be a task that's in the digital rebar system and it will be added into this workflow. And this is really important. Instead of adding your own workflow and building your own thing, what we've actually done is taken a profile. So parameters have defined in configuration additional work that needs to be done during this pipeline. Uh, and that is going to be uh, really simple. So we're adding that. So now before it starts, we're going to run our package updates. Then we're going to run this run book during workflow. That looks great. I want to make sure that this is here, so that's always a useful thing to double check. Uh, otherwise, this is good to go. We should have a task for this Ansible local playbooks, if I spell everything right. Let's see. I'll just look, search for Ansible. Ansible playbooks local, so I did do it wrong. Easy enough to fix. Come back over to my profiles. Look for training. Here's that. And I do need to go in and fix that. Let's see. Oh, sorry, it's not training. Universal application training. I have to go to the pipeline. Training is actually the clusters profile. And here we want to set the correct uh, task to execute. So that's much better. Save that. Looks good. So now let's go ahead and start that pipeline. Remember, it's universal application training. So, so we go back, we're going to build our training to cluster. Linode again, cluster base is perfectly fine. That's going to build the cluster. But this time, instead of using the generic pipeline, we want to go in and we want to do our training pipeline. So universal application training pipeline is exactly right. Other changes are not necessary. We'll give it some different icons here. Uh, ticket and run this one. So now when the system runs, instead of it starting the universal application base like we did for training one, so here we set that generic one. Now when that machine gets created, we are going to create the uh, pipeline that I just added, my universal application training pipeline. And that way it runs run book, we'll inject the Ansible tasks. And we'll get to see that happen in just a second. Let's check on the status. Work order is moving along. Just about to create the machine. So this looks, looks very nice. So now the machine's been created. And what you'll notice here is we have this universal application training. I changed the icon and you can see it very clearly. I have the profile for my cluster, so I could have cluster specific things in that profile. And now as soon as the machine is created, we will get to watch it go through the next steps of the process. Here it started, quickly moving through universal application start. We're already in Runbook. We can see our Linux package application is being updated. And then immediately after this, we're going to get into the Flexiflow during process and run the Ansible playbook. So you can see we're literally running that playbook that I injected by task into my system. And it's installing Ansible on that machine because it didn't exist. And it will then run my simple playbook as part of this process. Excellent. So that's already done. If I come back into the Ansible local, got to open up that job. What you'll see here is that it ran my playbook. This is the end. This is, I'll show you exactly what that playbook does. It, it does a debug show the DRP data. It does a quick test. So we've, we've provided this sort of default sample testing Ansible playbook for you to start with. And what we want to do now is run my own custom version of that. And to do that, we have to go into our templates. We're going to create a new template uh, based on that Ansible one. Oh, these are work order templates, sorry. Uh, 
regular templates, templates. We're going to look for this Ansible template that I have. So here is my Ansible Playbooks test playbook. I need this material from it. There is no clone for the templates. I'm going to create a new one and we're going to call it uh, training YAML uh, template, TMPL. That's excellent. Copy this in and we really don't want to make any changes except to prove that it worked. So here I'm just going to put in uh, training so we can validate that that we've actually changed this and used our own one. And there is some documentation on there's actually a whole video on how to how to do this work. We have a separate training for how to build your own custom Ansible in this case. So I'm just doing the minimum to sort of show you how this works. Excellent. So we now have this new uh, training template. I should I should capture the uh, file. That would be smart. Excellent. And if I come back over to my profile, my pipeline, and take my training uh, pipeline, here's my universal application training. Instead of making a new one, I'm going to go ahead and add a parameter to do my Ansible playbook. So here's my Ansible playbooks. Very nice. Populates it with the default, which I'm now going to replace with the one I just did, and this training Ansible playbook. So in doing this and adding it to this pipeline, I have now told that pipeline to run this template. And you can pull these out of Git or out of file locations or things like that. The simplest is to just pull it out of a, a template, and then you can actually use digital rebar substitutions and things like that. Uh, but what's happened now with this pipeline is that this pipeline now includes the ability, and you can see all the documentation for it, to add in a custom playbook. Very, very straightforward. And if I went back to uh, build the whole system, I could build a new cluster with that pipeline. Uh, the other thing I could do is I can come back to my machines, and since I've redefined this exact pipeline, I can rerun this pipeline for and get a new result. So if I reset it to go back to universal start and run that pipeline, it's going to go through the process. Now it'll be much faster because I don't have to do that install. We're in the run book already already done the Linux application, and now I've got the Ansible Playbooks local already worked. Um, I, could, I could expand it to read it, but I'm going to jump back into the actual job log. And what you'll see here is training and training. So the places where we made the change, we have now injected a custom Ansible Playbook into the pipeline runs. And so when I build a new cluster, if I came back and added training three here, same process. Uh, on any one of these clouds, it would work the same way. One or two machines. I can now pick my training app, uh, pipeline. Looks good. And new colors, brown this time. New icon, lab. And this is going to go through that same process, start that same pipeline, and then run that that. Um, playbook that we had had. If I want a different pipeline that runs a different Ansible template, all I have to do is define it in the parameters. Or if I wanted, I could also do it in the profile itself and add a Ansible playbook parameter here. So here's this Ansible playbooks. If I, if I save this, this is the default. Uh, let's see and save save the save this in here this is actually going to override the one i have in the pipeline and go back to using the correct uh using my test reference so the pipeline is going to provide my basics i do always have the options to override those behaviors and change them and, and have them be specific this is the power of how we've defined infrastructure pipelines using the configuration mechanisms because i can actually add in to a pipeline and have it site specific uh, and then still have completely generic behavior. Incredibly powerful way to reuse uh, automation and infrastructure. And, and normally what I would do next, so I would take uh, these simple pieces and I would create a content pack and that would become a component for my unique infrastructure, my team. So I would have a pipeline that was specific to the work I needed to get done while my operations team would actually know that the pipelines that they were running could have had a, uh, completely standardized operating procedures. So incredibly powerful in, in, all these, in all these pieces. Once again, I'm spinning up a new machine, so it's got to go through the process 
all over again and make sure that everything is right. So that was pretty simple. Overall, we really didn't have to do much work to add in custom Ansible into a standard infrastructure pipeline. And at this point, I now have three machines that have run through, two using the standard pipeline, one using my default. And uh, if I'm done now, I can just clean up and have the system remove all of that infrastructure and uh, take care of my housekeeping for me. Uh, super powerful. Uh, this one is, is really so simple. I hope you can go through and, and replicate the experience yourself. You're just copying that one uh, universal application profile, cloning it, including the Ansible uh, playbook task, and then overriding it with a template that you create for your own Ansible injection. Very, very simple. If you have more questions, please, please come join our community on Slack. Just ask us questions. Um, we really do want to help you get this working and uh, help you collaborate around infrastructure for your own company. Thanks.